Thank you. Good morning, Alicia. Well, we're going to be doing a bit of a stock watch today, and I'm going to be leaving banks and telecoms aside simply because we've uh, really uh, talked them to death over the past week or so. So let's start off with Ken Alcova. I mean, sitting at just around uh, the 11 shilling mark after its share split, what value are you seeing in this counter at the moment? I, I think there's plenty. There's a very powerful story behind Kennel Cobal. That's the geographical expansion. They've got assets from Zambia to Ethiopia. And I think as they consolidate this fragmented network, they're going to be uh, operational efficiencies. And I think they're going, they're going to ride a, uh, ride a rising tide. At this price, however, we're now at about three-year highs. We're trading at a PE of just below 13. I think the real juice has already been had, but I can see it going up to about 12 to 13 shillings without much trouble. Well, the company has relaunched its 1.5 billion shilling uh, commercial program, uh, uh, paper program, which has been on the market since 2002. I mean, what activity are you expecting there where acquisitions and rebranding for this company seems to be top of the agenda? Well, I, I think that's a smart move. Uh, uh, commercial paper rates are at very low absolute levels because of what's happened in the Treasury bill curve. So I think that's a clever move in order to get some more leverage on the balance sheet. And as you said, they, they will need to rebrand across, across the whole network. How expensive that is, we haven't yet had much feedback from the management. But the core underlying business is doing very well, and they steered, they guided profits higher for this next earnings release about a week ago. Well, does their current battle in court with uh, KPRL pose any concern for you at the moment? Because when we are talking about a strong balance sheet here, depending on which way uh, things swing in the courtroom, uh, that balance sheet uh, could be hit pretty hard. That's a fair point, and uh, clearly there's a lot of lit litigation risk around the company at the moment. They've been bundled out of uh, uh, the, refine the, processing, the refinery processing of late, um, as, as you correctly mentioned. But, you know, there tends to be a lot of noise around legal issues in Kenya, but ultimately sense prevails. And I think in this particular in instance, it's two big boys grumbling, must try to outmuscle each other. But the bottom line is, I don't think the company's done anything wrong. Well, in the meantime, Mumia Sugar is set to get a 10% off its revenue from the production of biodiesel. It's also been awarded a new purchase price for the power supply from its uh, co-generation plant. Now, this is a company that has shown how diversification can become key to operations and growth, much like Ati River Mining has done, right? Absolutely, and they've been, they've been ahead of the curve. I don't think investors have actually uh, you know, saluted the price in the, in the way they might have done for the share price. So I think there's plenty of upside. They're, they're, as you said, they're selling power back to the national grid. They're looking at ethanol. They're looking at gasohol. You know, they've got plenty of things in the pipeline. And I think Lula's visit, uh, President Lula, Lula of Brazil's visit, confirms that you know, Brazil have a niche in this area, and I can see somewhere over the horizon some kind of transaction between Mumias and a Brazilian entity, because Mumias has the ideas, has, but needs the capital. And I think they should be looking along JV routes, yeah. which is the way I expect them to go. Price-wise, I can see it up at 1360. It's so, about 1260 now. Exactly, sitting at 1260 at the moment, would you be a buyer at this stage of the game? Yes, I would. I think uh, on a forward PE of about nine, assuming zero acceleration, it looks a fairly well priced with a little bit of upside 10 to 20, 10 to 15 percent. Now, to a degree, this is a company that is stepping on the toes of KPLC. A KPLC certainly not sitting back. It is uh, looking at ways to reduce losses on account of vandali uh, vandalization by, uh, you know, buying dry transformers that will not be uh, using oil. It's also looking at uh, restructuring its capital base uh, to cater to rising demand moving forward. What's your view on Kenya Power Lighting Company? It's a very interesting company. The share price is trading, assuming an optimal outcome in this balance sheet restructuring exercise you're talking about. It's been around 199, 200 for quite some time, and there's been a, a tremendous amount of activity at this price. So I think the price is signaling something positive. Having said that, you know there are a lot of unknowns at the moment. Mm -hmm. First of all, we don't know the ratio of exchange for the government of Kenya's shares. It could be an enormous dilution. Um, I suspect not because their bona fides in this regard have been uh, uh, attested to since 
2003. So I expect an optimal outcome. I think it's an interesting company, but I, for one, would prefer to see some of these ratios out you know, in black and white before I looked at picking it up. Added to that, just this morning I came across a headline uh, that said that the company is also set to adjust its fuel cost element in tariffs to uh, 3 shillings 18. That's the lowest it's been since May 2008. Ali Khan, what do you see this uh, spelling for the business moving forward? Well, I, I, they've got to bring it down because they were using so much, exp you know, we're essentially a, a, a hydrology driven uh, electricity market. It's all to do with water. There was no water throughout 2009 that to add on all this expensive fuel that's coming off now. Our dams are full. We've had optimal rains. So the adjustment, I think, is in line with the market and nothing more or less than that. In fact, they've been a little bit slow to adjust it to the, to the entire customer base. In the meantime, East African Cables this weekend issued issued a, a profit warning for the financial year ending December. It's attributed this uh, poor performance to its Tanzanian operations. Uh, they're saying that's uh, gripped with low sales to uh, the electricity supplier Tanesco. What's your perspective on the company's outlook here where the Kenyan unit is still strong and profitable? It's, it's, I agree with you. It's a little bit difficult to read. It's an interesting market. Obviously, they are, they are, they are supplying electricity infrastructure uh, companies, but they've had a lot of trouble with this Tanzanian operation. It's, it's been ongoing for more than 12 months. At this kind of price, 21, 22, it looks a little bit rich to me. I'd prefer to see the Tanzanian business turn around before mm -hmm. I jumped in.